Hey, how's it going? This is Amy Scott Grant, and welcome to another installment of Truth Testing Methods. This is part three of the pendulum, how to use a pendulum to get multiple choice answers. Because up until this point, we've only used yes, no, and of course, the need more information, which we talked all about in the last segment. So in this segment, we're going to talk about how you can use your pendulum to get answers to multiple choice questions. From everything as simple, you know, everyday things that are really simple, like you're at a restaurant and you want to know what's most optimal for you to order. And by the way, if you use this method in a restaurant, I promise you, you will have some of the best meals you've ever had in your lifetime. It's absolutely exquisite. And what I have found happens, both with myself and with others that have done this with me, is you wind up ordering something that you never in a million years you would have picked. I Like you didn't even, you've probably eaten at that restaurant once a week for six years and you never even knew that was on the menu. It's literally like something you never noticed before, something you never would have ordered and you, you're in love with the first bite. You're like, oh my God, it's the best thing I've ever eaten. It is an extraordinary experience. I could tell you stories all day long about weird stuff we ordered that turned out to be so good because we ordered it using a pendulum. Anyway, first I'd have to show you how to do this, right? So what I'm saying is you could use it for things like what to order off a menu, you know, your, um, if you're shopping for a gift for someone, oh my gosh, this is really helpful. Let's say you have three or four gift ideas. Wouldn't it be great to know like what would be the most optimal gift for that person, like what they would really love or what they could use or they've been wanting? Or I'm telling you, when you use this method to buy gifts, you'll be amazed. People will like look at you and go, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I needed. How did you know? And you just go, oh, you know, my pendulum, right? Just use my good old pendulum. That's how I knew. You may or may not tell them that. But at any rate, let me show you how to do multiple choice because you'll find a variety of uses. And it comes in really handy with that whole booking the airline thing that I talked about earlier. So I'm going to pan this camera down so that you can see my hand. And here's my pendulum. And what I'm going to do is I'm using the pendulum with my dominant hand and I'm using my non-dominant hand for multiple choice. So I'd start with the pinky and I'd assign each finger an option. Okay, so let's go with the gift thing. So you want to get a gift for your friend and you're trying to decide between roses, uh, no, let's say flowers. You're trying to decide between flowers, um, food, something to wear, or something for the home. Okay, and then I like to make the thumb none of the above. You know why? Because it's kind of out there in Lonelyville anyway. So, so what did we have? We had uh, flowers, food, clothes, something for the home, none of the above, right? Like none of the above would mean something I haven't mentioned. Like maybe you're supposed to buy a gift certificate to flight school or something like that. So I would hold my pendulum right over the center of my hand and I'd ask, all things considered, what is the most optimal gift choice for my friend's birthday coming up. Now, I can see it swing, it'll swing towards a finger. In this case, it swung towards this finger, which as you remember, we designated as food. Now, I could even do this again and say, okay, so what kind of food? Uh, candy, um, salty food, specialty food, dinner gift certificate, some other option, right? I just made up those options. You could make it whatever. And it's swinging towards the first thing, candy, which really makes sense because this particular person I had in mind really, really loves candy. So I can't say that I'm too surprised to see that's what came up. So you can use the multiple choice thing for anything and then what I like to do, especially if you've been through a whole bunch of multiple choice options, is just to verify. Like, um, so all things considered, it's optimal for so-and-so's birthday for me to get him candy from such and such a store. Is that true and accurate? And then you get a, you get a yes, no, right? And if you get a need more information, then one of the very, you know, you just got too many variables. Now, another thing you can use this multiple choice for is numbers, okay? Now, I do a lot of products, teleclasses, ebooks, all that kind of stuff on the internet. And one of the biggest questions that always is for us when we're planning a teleclass is, you know, how many sessions is it going to be and what are we going to charge? Are we going to do a preview call? How far in advance are we going to do the preview call? There's just a million little details to work out on the front end before we actually start promoting any new teleclass. So I use this method, and you can use the multiple choice method that I just showed you to go ahead and figure out what's most optimal. So if you were looking for money, you know, you could always do this for if you're going to buy something, what's the most optimal amount for me to spend on such and such. So what you can do then, I'm going to pan back down again to show you my hand. 
And what you could do for that is you could make, let's say that you want to keep it under $1,000, okay? So you have five fingers, right? So you might make it something, there's a couple different ways you can do it. One is to go, you know, up to 100, up to 200, up to 300, up to 400, more than 400, right? And then you could check. Or you could say, you know, 0 to 250, 250 to 500, 501 to 750, 750 to 1,000, over 1,000, right? And you could check that way. Really, anything that you can break down into four or five or less different parts, you can use the multiple choice items, you know, the multiple choice option for. So I hope that you have found this installment helpful. And in the next segment, we're going to be talking about bias because I know when people start playing around with the bias, they say, well, how do I know if I'm biased and am I just swinging this with my hand or I saw my hand move or something like that. So I hope you will join me for that because that's going to be a really good installment and it's one that will help you learn to trust the answers that you get from your pendulum. So this is Amy Scott Grant saying thanks for joining me today and you can read more about all this stuff or book a session with me on my website at AskAmyAnything.com. See you later.